We have a featured speaker today, uh, Dr. Fred Belo from the Univers University of Illinois. Uh, Dr. Belo is a uh, professor of crop physiology in the Department of Crop Sciences at the University of Illinois. He received his BS, MS, and PhD in agronomy, all from the University of Illinois. He's a principal investigator of the Crop Physiology Lab at the University of Illinois. His research is focused on understanding factors limiting crop productivity, particularly corn and soybeans. He has taught introductory courses to undergraduates as well as advanced courses to graduate students and given numerous presentations at national conferences and, and local meetings. He has developed the seven wonders of the corn yield world as a tool to teach farmers and agricultural professionals the value of their individual crop management decisions and has been actively using his concepts to develop high yield system capable of, sustaining crop, of sustainably producing 300 bushel per acre corn. Last year, he launched a similar concept for high yield soybeans termed the Six Secrets of Soybean Success, which he evaluated in 2012 and which shows considerable promise in increasing soybean yields through intensive crop management. In just a couple of moments, we will turn it over to Dr. Belo for his presentation on the nutrient requirements for a 230 bushel corn crop and a 62 bushel soybean crop. Well, hey, pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to talk about nutrient requirements for uh, high yield corn. I need to acknowledge one of my graduate students, Ross Bender. This is actually some of his uh, master's work. And uh, I'll tell you right off the bat that uh, I'm not convinced that uh, soil tests, today's soil test data are necessarily calibrated to high uh, corn yields. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you think about the, uh, the, the corn yield genetics we have today, we, we have genetics with biotech traits, improved genetics. We're able to probably grow well in excess of 300 bushels. And uh, we're basically managing that genetics with old crop management and particularly soil fertility. And if you think about uh, a soil, soil, soil fertility based on a soil test, that's a, that's a sort of feed the soil approach. And I think in order to grow high corn yields, you're, you're going to have to take a feed the plant approach. You're, you're going you're to have to use technology to place those fertilizers where they need, and you're going to have to have fertilizer technologies to make sure that uh, those fertilizers are available to the crop when the crop needs then. So that's what I'm going to cover here a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk about how much uh, of each of the major nutrients a 230 bushel corn crop needs, and I'll talk about when they need it and where and how they use each of these nutrients. And before I get into that, let's uh, let's look at what a typical fertilization strategy for a uh, corn is in the U.S., if there is any such thing as a typical strategy. And I'll say that this represents an average. On average, uh, uh, corn growers put about 180 pounds of nitrogen on their corn crop. Uh, they'd uh, put 90 pounds P2O5 uh, on the corn crop and uh, 120 pounds of K2O. And so that would be a typical fertilizer requirement. Uh, many of them put no sulfur fertilization or no micronutrients. And so I want you to keep these numbers in mind as I I show you what the actual nutrient requirements of corn are and their uh, removal patterns. And so I, I, I show you here some of my favorite elements. Uh, this is the amount of, uh, uh, of each of the, my favorite nutrients that, that's required to uh, produce 230 uh, bushel corn. And I, I've divided each of these nutrients into, into three categories. I, I have the, the, the amount that's required to produce, and that, that's the amount of each of these nutrients that the crop has to take up over the course of the growing season. That's going to be from fertilizer and or the soil, but uh, this is the, the, the total amount. I put over here how much of each of these nutrients are removed with the grain. Okay, that, that amount is physically taken off from the field, and this is sort of analogous to fertilizer maintenance requirements. And then on this side, I, uh, I, I, I calculate what I call the harvest index. And the harvest index represents, of the amount the crop takes up, what percentage of that nutrient is removed with the grain. Now, I get excited about a nutrient as a limiting factor for high corn yields if one of three things happens. First, the crop needs a lot of it, like nitrogen or potassium. Second, as I'll show you a little later, it has an interesting pattern of uptake, like boron, or a third, and in my mind, the most important, the grain needs a lot of it, or it has a high removal with the grain. And, and, and here's my thinking. I want to grow a lot of grain. 
And therefore, those elements that have a high grain requirement or a high harvest index must be the most important ones to manage for high corn yield. And four of those fit that criteria. They're, they're nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, and zinc. Now, I'm going to go through each of these nutrients. And uh, in, in addition to showing you the amount that's required to produce, I'll show you when in the life cycle the, the majority of that uptake occurs, where it's located in the plant, and knowing where and how, uh, knowing when and how much gives us an opportunity to, to improve uh, a fertilizer use through through better management. Now I'll start here with uh, you know the one that's probably the most uh, important in many people's views for high corn yield, and that is nitrogen fertilizer. Everybody knows that corn plants need a lot of nitrogen fertilizer. In fact, here I show you for a 230 bushel corn crop, it requires a little over uh, 250 pounds of nitrogen. But, but the question is, when's the sweet spot for that nitrogen uptake? So for each of the nutrients, I'm going to show a, a series of figures that looks a lot like this. Uh, I'm showing you how much nitrogen is in the crop, pounds per acre, as a function of time. And I've expressed time on a thermal time basis. I've used growing degree days, cumulative growing degree days. This is called thermal time. And I've also expressed growth on a stage basis, the, the, the growth stages. V for vegetative stages, number of leaves with collars, and R for reproductive uh, stages, the progression of the, of the year. And I've divided the crop into its component parts, the leaf, the stalk and the leaf sheaths, the cob and husk, and the grain. And over here, I show you the percentage of the total. So in other words, in, or, in order to grow 230 bushel corn, you need to take up 250 pounds of N over the course of the growing season. Now, when's the sweet spot for nitrogen uptake? Well, it's right here between V12 and R1. If you look at a V12 crop, a V12 crop has about 50 pounds of N per acre in it. An R1 crop has 200 pounds of N per acre in it. So in other words, between R1 and V12, that crop has to take up 150 pounds of N. And that's roughly a three-week period, usually the third week of June to the second week of July. That crop has to take up 150 pounds of N to grow 230 bushel corn. That's more than seven pounds of N per day, every day, for 21 straight days. And that's because you're making the business end of the plant, the leaf, and the stock. And guess what? If I don't take up my seven pounds today, I can't go back and take up 14 pounds the next day. I just limit my photosynthetic machinery. So I, after having to take up seven pounds of N per day for 21 straight days, the crop at flowering has 200 pounds of N in it. It still needs to take up roughly 60 pounds after flowering. And that 60 pounds after flowering goes to the grain but it's not enough to meet the, the complete needs of the grain. So you'll notice that the leaf and the stalk, they cannibalize themselves to supply nitrogen to the developing grain. And this uh, screams limiting factor, and nitrogen, uh, after all, is one of the most important elements for high corn yield. It's even worse for phosphate. If you look at, uh, if you look at uh, phosphorus, a 230-bushel corn crop requires 101 pounds P2O5 of phosphate. I just got done telling you that, uh, that most growers apply 90 pounds. So we're already 10 short. And of that uh, 101 pounds of phosphate uptake, 80 of it, 80% of it is removed with the grain. So you can see that there isn't much surplus left to re result in a, uh, any kind of phosphorus buildup. If I look, when I show you the pattern of phosphate uptake, you're, you're going to see that Phosphate has to be accumulated season long for uh, high corn yields. So th just like I showed you before, how much phosphate uptake, pounds per acre, is in the crop as a function of time. And I want you to see that that, uh, that phosphate accumulation has to occur throughout the entire season. There's actually two sweet spots for phosphate uptake. Again, one of them is between V12 and R1, where that crop has to accumulate about 50 pounds, P205. Again, more than a pound P2O5 per acre per day. And then there's another period of rapid uh, phosphate uptake that, that has to occur literally throughout the grain filling period. 80% of the total phosphorus that the crop removes 
the, the crop accumulates is removed with the grain. Uh, this is probably the way we're currently fertilizing our corn crop, uh, one of the most limiting elements for high corn yield because of the need for season long uptake. Again, I'll work right down the list, and potassium falls in this category of an element that has a, a fairly high requirement. Um, but but uh, and, and the key factor with uh, potassium is the vegetative need. If you look at the potassium uptake of 230 bushel corn, you'll see that there's a very rapid period of uptake that occurs vegetatively. In fact, by the time the crop reaches the R1 growth stage or flowering, 80% of the potassium that this crop needs has already been accumulated by the crop. And potassium is freely mobile within the stem and the leaf. And unlike uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, literally all of the needs of potassium by corn grain can be met by taking it out of the vegetation. So vegetative uptake is the key for, uh, for potassium. Now, I know a lot of people don't fertilize with sulfur. This is sort of the missing link. A lot more uh, evidence of instances of, uh, of sulfur, uh, crop, sulfur responses to crop yield, and that's because we, we now have cleaner air. We used to get a lot of sulfur from the, from the atmosphere from acid rain. Cleaner air, higher yields, fertilizers that don't contain sulfur uh, means that, mean that there's a lot more instances of, uh, of a sulfur need, and a 230 bushel corn crop has to accumulate 23 pounds of sulfur over the course of the season. 60% of which are 13 pounds, of which is removed with the grain. And when I show you the uptake pattern for a sulfur, you'll see that it looks an awful lot like the uptake pattern for phosphate. If you look at the crop at flowering, only half of the, of the sulfur that the crop needs is actually in the crop by flowering. So this means sulfur has to be available season long. And unlike the mobile nutrients like nitrogen, phosphate and potassium that the grain needs can be met by taking it out of the vegetation sulfur is relatively immobile in the plant and that means this grain need needs to be met by uptake from the root uh, and, and so the, this is a this is an, I, I, an example of uh, where there's a season-long need for sulfur availability now i'll briefly show two of my favorite micronutrients for high corn yields and those are zinc and boron, and, and um, uh, uh, being a micronutrient, a lot less is actually required. But uh, of all of the micronutrients, zinc is the one that has by far the highest uh, grain requirement or removal with the grain. 62% of the zinc absorbed by the plant is removed with the grain. And when you look at the uptake pattern for zinc, again, it looks an awful lot like the uptake pattern of, of phosphate and sulfur and that zinc uptake has to occur season long. Notice there's two periods of rapid zinc uptake. One of them coincides with late vegetative development, V12 and, and, and V18, and then another one that coincides with the development of the grain. And uh, so, so zinc is the only element that has this high grain uh, requirement. And just micronutrients like sulfur are relatively immobile in the plant. And so this zinc that the grain needs, again, has to come in the plant through the root. And then finally, the last nutrient I'll talk about is the micronutrient boron. And boron fits into this category of having a, uh, a unique pattern of accumulation. Uh, boy, corn plants don't need that much boron on a weight basis, and they don't remove that much but there's a key period in time when boron needs to be available to the crop. And that's because of the role that boron plays in pollen viability, silk growth, and in pollination. And if you look at the uh, uptake of uh, well, boron by the, by the corn crop, um, you, you'll notice that uh, there the, has a very interesting pattern of uptake. Uh, and, uh, and you notice that uh, vegetatively, there's a large accumulation of boron in both the leaf and the stem. But right around flowering, see how the leaf and stem actually lose boron. And we believe this occurs because uh, boron is necessary for viable pollen. That pollen is shed. Those silks uh, elongate and are also uh, to a large degree shed. And so, so here the plant physically removes boron from the leaf and stem to aid in the pollination process. Then there's a second period of boron uptake, uh, quite a bit smaller, 
that goes to the grain. And uh, you know, after the after the pollination period, boron is relatively immobile in the plant. So again, this grain requirement has to be met by uptake through the roots. And so the take-home message, one of the things that I hope you uh, have gotten from this is that not all nutrients are accumulated at the same rate or at the same time or used in the same way to produce high corn yields. And uh, um, some of these mineral nutrients uh, re require seasonal uptake. Phosphorus, sulfur, and uh, zinc are, are, are examples have to be have to be taken up season long by the root of the corn crop for high corn yields and um, some elements have a high harvest index or, or a high grain requirement and those I believe are the most important for high corn yield again uh, phosphorus sulfur and zinc and uh, the, the the mineral nutrient nitrogen all have high grain requirements or high harvest indices. So I hope, I, I hope I've convinced you that not all nutrients are used at the same rate in the same way uh, to produce high corn yield. And by understanding the pattern of uh, nutrient accumulation, where it is in the plant and how it's used in the plant, this gives growers the opportunity to improve uh, fertilizer usage and grain yield through crop management. So really appreciate your attention. Thank you very much.